Hello, I'm Warlord, and welcome to Animating in Real Time with iClone. As you can see, this is a little bit different from what I usually do. And one of the reasons is, I'm getting so many questions a day now that I really can't keep up with them. I don't get hundreds of questions, but I get anywhere from a few to maybe 25. And I can't always answer them every day. So they're starting to back up. The next day becomes the next day, becomes the next day, becomes the next week. So in order to answer some of these more frequent questions, I'm going to try a little program like this. Now, I'm not going to release anybody's email address or anything like that because that wasn't discussed beforehand. But we have plenty of questions that we can go through. It's not just going to be basics either. I know that I'm known more for teaching basics, particularly with my book, The iClone Beginner's Guide and things like that. But in this case, we're going to have basics. And we're also going to have an advanced uh, segment where we go over some of the more advanced tools like Studio Max and ZBrush. Now, these are the tools I'm familiar with. Now, I'm a long-time user of Studio Max, and I know there's a lot of other applications out there that are just as good. But that's just my particular flavor of 3D, because most of the shops I work for as a freelancer use Studio Max. So that's probably what I use more than anything to build basic props, to rig, bone, skin, things like that. However, I do use ZBrush, which I'm not near the expert in. I've only been using it a few years, but I do use it to create characters and a few other things like that. So we'll go into that, and I don't know, sometimes a lot of detail, sometimes very little detail, because in some cases, if you're going to uh, watch the advanced segment, you'll need to be advanced to know what's going on. In the other cases, I will try and take you through some of the basics to get you to the advanced level. But we're going to cover all that. And I also like to keep my skills up by watching tutorials every week. So anybody that sees a good tutorial out there, post it in the comments. I know we're all waiting on iClone 6 also. I don't have a lot of information to give you on that, but we might as well work with what we got. So when we come back, we'll get started with our first email. Thanks for joining me. The first email we're going to answer is a bit unusual in that it involves rope constraints. But I've been getting quite a few questions about why a rope constraint won't hook to the proper part of a simple prop. Well, after reading a few of these emails, I finally distilled down to what they were asking, and it involves the pivot point of the prop you're hooking up. Not the prop you're hooking to, not the anchor prop, so much as the prop you're hooking up. You need to make sure where the pivot point is set, top, bottom, left, right, as to where it's going to hook up. That's pretty easy to visualize, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. Let's pull in two different boxes to use for this. Both of these boxes will need to be physics enabled. So you can hold down control, select both. Go to your physics settings, activate physics. Now just select the top box and leave it. Make sure it's static. The bottom box needs to stay dynamic. Top box, static. Now, the bottom box, of course, if you were to do it right now, it would just fall through. Bottom box is what we're going to constrain. So we're going to click Constraint Settings, and we're going to go ahead and add a rope constraint. Now, this right now it's constrained to the world, but we want it to actually be constrained to this box. So we're going to pick Target, and now it's constrained to the box. Now, an easier way to visualize this is just to move it over here. Don't worry about where this rope is. It will redraw. And now you can see what the problem is that they're talking about. If you were trying to get this to swing smoothly, you wouldn't want it to unwrap like that. And that's because the pivot point is on the bottom. To solve that, you can come over here and put the pivot point on the top. And you notice immediately the rope constraint goes to the top. If you want it fairly smooth, depending on, on what you're doing, you can always go to the middle. And you get a smoother motion. Now, if you want to duplicate this, if you were to just grab both of these, hold down control and duplicate it, you're not going to get the results that you're thinking of. Now, you can always go in there and you can change it. Uh, you can go in there and reset your constraint. But there's an easier way to do this, and that's to load another dummy. And you want to make sure you set it as dummy, or a box, and set it as dummy. If you can't see it, hit control D to toggle. And I would recommend you making this a different color just so you don't get it confused. It doesn't matter what color. And if you want to, you can uh, also make it smaller. I usually go 10 or 
And now it doesn't really matter where this is placed because what we're going to do is select both of these and we're going to attach them to this box, this dummy. Now you'll notice that when we have that attached, you'll see the red area is a lot larger and everything moves. Again, you don't worry about where the rope's at because it'll always redraw to wherever you move it to. But if you want to go ahead and duplicate this, you can now go Shift D. And let's go ahead and increase it five times. Let's pull them in towards each other. Hit OK. And now everything should work duplicated. Of course, Control D to toggle your dummies off. So always remember, if you want to retain animation to duplicate, then if you have more than one object, you're going to have to go ahead and attach that to a dummy. That will allow you to go ahead and retain the animation. Use a box because it's not as many faces. That way you can have a lot of boxes out there and it doesn't really affect the flow of it. But if you will just watch where the pivot point is on whatever uh, prop that you're attaching to, then you should be able to attach to the proper side of that prop with the rope constraint. The next question involves something that's probably happened to all of us at one time or another. We go out and we find a nice uh, building or house with an interior room. Maybe we even build it ourselves. But we put our characters in it. We point and click to send the character to move to a certain part in the room and boom, it goes down through the floor. Maybe all the way through the floor, maybe just a little way. Well, it's very simple why that happened. It doesn't know that that's the floor. When you have a default iClone project and you haven't changed anything, the floor is already built in. So that is what the character assumes the floor is when it comes to work. That's what it's going to work with. So what you need to do is take the prop that you're using, the room, right click, add to terrain, and now the character will know that that is the floor and that that is what it needs to walk on. You could possibly also use dummies, right click, add them to terrain. That way you could get other floors to work, things like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now here's a building with a raised floor. And the problem you can see immediately, we'll load the Gorf character. And you can see that he goes through the building, through the floor. So we raise him up to the floor, move him back a little, right click, move, walk forward. And as you can see, he goes right down into the floor. Undo all that. So the simple way again is we just select the prop, right click, add to terrain. Select your character, move, walk forward, and now he knows where the floor is. Welcome to the first segment where we look at something a little more advanced like creating an animatable prop and putting it into iClone. Now this is just going to be like a tree root or a tentacle, there's not going to be much to it. I'm going to go ahead and hit number 7 to turn on my poly budget, uh, or I should say just the poly count, and I'm going to create just a simple cone. And as you can see, we're at 288. Now we could just, uh, I guess, scale this thing up and use it, but I don't really like the way that looks so much. So there's other ways to do this, and what I do is, is use a modifier. I'm just going to draw a straight line. doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Now this is going to be a spline. Then come back to my cone and I'm going to add a path deformer. Path deform. I'm going to pick the line and I'm going to stretch it up. Now I also like to click on flip as it gives me a little sharper a stretch. Now that's all we need to do for that. Once you know that you've got your poly count like that and things, you can go ahead and convert it to poly, but we're not real sure about that right yet. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and hit angle snap so it'll be easy to rotate over and I'm just going to rotate it straight across. And we're going to go ahead and put the bones in it. 
go into animation, bone tools, create bones. Now generally I put a bone in every one of these and this is not going to be real smooth and I'll show you here in a minute what I mean. This should have two to three times as many segments. Uh, generally I will put a bone in each segment. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. That probably just depends on more how angle you are. And of course at the end, right click and you get your final bone. We're through with that. Now, we select our object, and we go over here to the modifier, and we're going to put a skin on it. You can find the modifiers in this drop down. Now, I have a set of modifiers that I use, and I've created this myself. You can do that with the modifier sets right here. So, all we're doing is putting a skin on it, and then we're going to add. And to make sure we're only getting bones, I'm going to clear, select bones only. Control A to select them all. Now we have boned and skinned this. Now I'm going to freeze so we can see what happens here. So yeah, as you can see, everything's working fine. So now we're ready to go ahead and export. Tentacle. I'm going to export as FBX. Hit OK. Don't worry about any of the warnings. And now we're ready to go into 3D Exchange. Import in the tentacle. Now, if you wanted to, you could come over here and uh, create it into a non-human character if you wanted to have character characteristics. But I'd rather leave it a prop so I can duplicate it easy. So we'll just leave it a prop. Tentacle. We've exported it. Now we're ready to go have a look with iCloud. Now let's go find our tentacle. I think I exported it into work. Tentacle, there it is. Now I'm going to move this down just a little. Because we can actually animate this. Because we can go into the edit animation layer. Instead of having to click each one, you can use the edit bone mode. And if we wanted to make this into a root or something like that then this is how we would do it you would just animate it and of course since we move down the timeline we can keep that animation by going to where the animation is at hitting collect clip Add to motion library, call it whatever. Hopefully you get a better name than that. Then you have a perform motion. Now this way, you, if you wanted this to be a tree root or something like that, uh, and at 288, you could actually duplicate this quite a bit and use it in the background. And you just make this to several different shapes and save it out. And basically this is all there is to it. Thank you for joining me in this very first show. 15 minutes went by pretty quick. And that's the time limit that I'm trying to set on these, give or take a few minutes. So we'll cover as much territory as we can. Next time, a little less talk, a little more work. We'll try and get more email covered. If you have any email, if you have any questions for me, then hop on over to www.iclonerevolution.com. Go to the Contact Us form. Now, sometimes those forms are shut off because of spam bots. But usually I turn them back on in a couple of days. And that really is the only way that you can be sure to get a hold of me because of all the spam that I do get. And I look forward to any questions, tips, anything you want to share. And of course, as always, you're always welcome to share tips, comments, or anything else here on the YouTube channel. Once again, I want to thank you very much for joining me, and we'll see you next time.